so let us start the second class of the antinumitoidal in the first class of antinumitoidal enthalamentic we discussed about benzimidazole macrocyclic lactones imidazothiazoles tetrahydropyrimidines and in this class we have to start the remaining part of the anti nematurous compound which include organophosphorus compound which include organophosphorus compound piprazine arsenicals substituted phenols and miscellaneous antinematodal enthalamic so let us start the organophosphorus compounds regarding the organophosphorus compound is concerned the drug that are used as a antinematodal enthalamics are dichlorophos metriphonate comophos haloxone so these are the drug that are available under the organophosphorus compound but because of their narrow margin of safety the organo compound antinematodal enthalamics are less in use regarding mechanism of action of antinematodal enthalamics or pharmacodynamics is concerned the organophosphorus compounds which inhibit the susceptible helminth and enzyme we called it acetylcholine esterase and therefore which lead to interference in neuromuscular transmission of neuromuscular transmission and finally it lead to the paralysis of the susceptible bacteria and this way organophosphorus compounds are acting similarly the compound that are also available organophosphorus insectics insecticides they are also acting in the same way they are inhibiting the enzyme acetylcholine esterase and which produce the cholinomimetic type of action finally leads to the paralysis the same way this is also acting in the helminth susceptible helminth but the problem with this drug is that the host in host it also produce the symptoms it also produce the similar type of activity and therefore because of this reason the drug is less in use in this organophosphorus compound the drug like dichlorohos as i have mentioned infrequently used and if we don't have the option then we have to use the drug against the nematodes like whip worm nodular worms strongloids hookworm escherichs for the species like pigs and dogs in case of horse the dichlorohos is used against the bots strongloids escherichs and whip worms and for the ruminants as we know the dichlorohos is a Uh, particularly against the cattle not is not safe to use as well as in 
poultry dichlorohose is also not safe to use and because of this safety problem concerned to dichlorohose the drug is usually available to perform less toxicity in pellet form that we call polyvinyl chloride resin pellet and because of this uh, pellet the dichlorohose is released slowly and slowly so therefore it reduces the potency of the toxicity in which the drug has to be administered regarding dog is concerned of course the drug is to be administered but if a dog showing following characteristic then we don't have to use it in this dog if the dog is severe constipation if the intestinal tract is blocked if the liver disease is concerned then in that condition of the dog we don't have to be use dichlorohose as well as because of its action on the enzyme acetylcholine esterase inhibitors this is also not used in young sick and pregnant animals regarding dose is concerned the dose for the dog is 27 to 30 mg orally for horse 20 to 40 mg orally for pigs 30 to 40 mg orally next in the same group organophosphorus compound is metriphonate and the other name of metriphonate is trichloroform regarding metriphonate is concerned this is a pro drug that means ki that has to convert into active form so active metabolite of metriphonate is dichlorohose so likewise dichlorohose metriphonate is also working it is used in horse pigs and dogs and regarding efficacy is concerned metriphonate is effective for the scarred ox urets bots and also against the gi nematodes in the ruminants <clears throat> in case of human being this metriphonate is act as an alternative of the very good drug praziquantel so metriphonate is an alternative of praziquantel in case of human being for the treatment of urinary cystosomiasis Uh, caused by cystosoma hematobium so this is for particularly human being is concerned as a alternative of praziquantel praziquantel one of the very good broad spectrum drug so regarding dose is concerned in horse is 40 mg per kg orally and pig 50 mg per kg two times orally another two drug from the same organophosphorus compound are comophos and haloxone regarding comophos is concerned occasionally used for cattle and uh, some ruminant so this is good thing is that about comophos this is dichlorohose is rather not to be used for cattle but comophos has to be used in cattle and comophos is effective against the susceptible worm of adult hemangus strategia trichostrongylus cooperia species regarding toxic manifestation is concerned it's twice of the therapeutic dose is it uh, going to produce the toxicity and because of the uh, low Uh, therapeutic index of the drug and because of the toxicity this come of us is a better choice to use as a feed additive so this come of us is a use as a feed additives the dose is concerned sheep 
एट एम जी पर के जी ओरली सिंगल डोज केटल फिफ्टीन एम जी पर के जी ओरली सिंगल डोज केटल एंड शीप टू पॉइंट फाइव टू टू एम जी पर के जी फीड फोर फीड फोर सिक्स डे and the last one is the haloxan haloxan is also used for the cattle sh uh, cattle and also other species like pig sheep horses and mostly active against the ebomojal ebomajal and small intestine parasite and not used for the large intestinal parasite safety of margin if you are going to compare with the other amongst the same group is very good that is about 3 to 7 times of its therapeutic dosage and uh, for young foal this is toxic so young foal haloxan should not be administered administered regarding dose for horse is 60 mg per kg orally for sheep and goat 30 to 50 mg or orally so this is all about the organophosphorus compound now we have to go through the uh, uh, this uh, other antinutritional enthalpic that is the piperazine so in this group piperazine there are two very important drug are used and these two are piperazine and diethyl carbamazine this diethyl carbamazine is interestingly a piperazine analog and diethyl carbamazine is also in short we have to write dec diethyl carbamazine regarding uh, the species susceptible to piperazines group is the drug is acting against the scarid so this is a important thing regarding other point about the piperazine is concerned we have to protect this piperazine against the light and the air so this is uh, important to keep this when if not then this will uh, of course affect the chemical entity of piperazine regarding its salt is concerned there are various salt is available in pip of piperazine are citrate adipate phosphate hexahydrate chloride sulfate dihydrochloride regarding dosage is concerned dosage we have to express in equivalent to hydrated equivalent so hydrated equivalent uh, for the dose we have to consider for the piperazine like 100 mg when we tell about the piperazine hydrate it means about 120 mg piperazine adipate about uh, 125 mg piperazine citrate so this is about the piperazine regarding mechanism of action is concerned which is very very important uh, the, uh, the the piperazine act as a gaba receptor agonist which means gamma amino butyric acid receptor agonist so after the binding with this gaba receptor agonist in, of the susceptible worm it leads to opening of chloride channel and once it get open chloride ion get influx so upon chloride ion influx in the muscle membrane of the scaris of susceptible helminth leads to the hyperpolarization because of influx of chloride ion and finally because of this hyperpolarization produces the flaccid paralysis so this is important this is going to produce the flaccid in paralysis so is a gaba agonist receptor agonist binding with that therefore it open the chloride channel produce the hyperpolarization and flaccid paralysis about its spectrum is concerned it is a narrow spectrum in nature and its activity against the scarids and nodular worms that is the oesophagostoma in all species as safety is concerned the drug piperazine is very safe if drug interaction is concerned important thing regarding the drug in interaction is that the piperazine usually piperazine usually we are not used concomitantly with the phenothiazine 
because when we have to use both the drug concomitantly then this is going to produce the seizure so not to be used concomitantly so this is important point second important point is that about the piperazine it produces the flaccid paralysis so we don't have to give the piperazine with the, the drug which produces the spastic paralysis like the drug of the tetrahydropyrimidine that is the parental and morental which produces the spastic paralysis so spastic paralysis and flaccid paralysis are just opposite to each other and therefore because of that reason piperazine should not be used in combination with parental and morental because of their antagonistic type of nature so this is important regarding it's a uh, use along with piperazine is concerned piperazine and purgative should not be given together because if you will give together then purgative has to be removed out through the stool fastly so therefore we avoid to give uh, purgatives in piperazine therapy regarding other property of its use is concerned piperazine is widely used for escarid that i have mentioned escarid infestation in the species like dogs cats horses swine and poultry and in a ruminant this uh, avoid to use piperazine why because earlier it was too much in use so because of this use in a ruminant when we have to use this piperazine again then the chances of resistant resistant problem is uh, there so therefore we have to avoid the piperazine to use in the ruminants so the dose for the piperazine in form of piperazine hydrate for cattle sheep and goat is 110 mg per kg orally for horses 200 mg per kg orally for pigs 250 to 300 mg per kg orally for poultry 250 mg per kg orally dog and cats cats 100 to uh, 10 80 to 100 mg per kg orally for toxocara species so this is about the one drug of the piperazine now the second drug is the dithalcarpamazine this is very old drug an important drug and uh, also we have to write dithalcarpamazine like dec so as we already mentioned that piperazine derivative is carbamazine about its use is concerned use against the filariasis called heartworm dirofilaria imatis particularly in dog escariasis the species toxocara species in dog and cats and in sheep and cattle the Dithylcarbamazine is used for the Dictyocolus viviparus. And in human being, as we know, the infestation of the Vucheria bancrafti or Brugia malai, which produces the tropical pulmonary eosinophilia in human being and also sometimes it blocks the limb, limb, limb vessels so in human being this dithylcarbamazine is very much in use for long time and the one of the drug that is still coming uh, containing heterazine is uh, containing the dithylcarbamazine is heterazine so heterazine is the heterazine is the drug which contain the dithyl carbamazine now we have to go through the use dithyl carbamazine is used for both treatment purposes as well as for the prophylaxis purposes regarding prophylaxis measure is concerned we have to use dithyl carbamazine for the heartworm dithyl uh, dirofilaria imitis and also for treatment of escariasis in dog regarding prevention uh, for a heart worm is concerned we have to administer the dithyl carbamazine one month before the uh, before the start of the mosquito season and it continued two months after the end of mosquito season regarding dose is concerned preventive measures for heart infection in dog about 6.6 .6 mg per kg orally single dose and for treatment 
scarids and other susceptible parasite 55 to 110 mg orally so this is about the piprazine that is the piprazine itself and the ethyl carbamazine now we have to go through the another drug of the anti nematodal enthalmentic which is called the arsenicals means the arsenic compound and this is not very much in use the reason is same because of its toxicity because they are the arsenic compound so they are called arsenicals and in this uh, arsenical group two drugs are still uh, 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 using some time the, the drug are thiacetarsamide and melarsomine. As we have mentioned, the arsenicals are arsenic compound, so it is poisonous in nature. And the drug that uh, are coming from this group are thiacetarsamide and melarsomine, which is a, uh, not used very frequently, occasionally used for adult dirofilaria emetis that is for the heartworm in the dog. Thiacetarsamide is concerned. It is effective against the adult heartworm that we already mentioned. Thiacetarsamide is active against the adult heartworm that is dirofilaria emetis in dog and showing rather no efficacy against the immature one. So immature and also the, against the nematode, the thiacetarsamide is not used, only used against the adult heartworm, that is dirofilaria emetis. Regarding mechanism of action of the thiacetarsamide or melarsomine or other arsenical is concerned, that is the same. As we know, arsenic as a metal, as a toxicant, having the property to bind with the compound, endogenous compound, which contains sulfhydryl group. So as we know, whether it is susceptible worm or the, the host possessing the sulfhydryl group containing endogenous substance in form of enzyme and protein and performing the various physiological function so therefore arsenic is going to bind with the sulfhydryl group containing enzyme and protein and inhibit or in in inactivate the function of enzyme and therefore it produces death of the susceptible heartworm regarding other property of thiacetarsamide is concerned along with glucocorticoid thiacetarsamide should not be used because glucocorticoid will protect the heartworm or you can say when we are going to use glucocorticoid along with the thiacetarsamide then the efficacy of thiacetarsamide get reduced so its activity get reduced so there is no fun to use it so therefore we don't use in coming with the glucocorticoid plus the thiacetarsamide regarding its use is concerned that we already discussed it is acting against the adult heartworm dirofilaria emetis in dog and cat and the dose is about 2.2 mg per kg iv two times daily for two week two days melarsomine is concerned of course similar to the uh, thiacetarsamide acting against the heartworm dirofilaria emetis and administered by deep intramuscular injection and it should not be administered recommended to administered advised to administered in dog and cat through IV or and subcut route because of the toxicity and the do dose for dog is 2.3 5 mg per kg body weight that is through deep intramuscular twice at 24 hours as part. So this is all about the group that we call arsenical. So arsenical is also 
finish now we have to go through the next group that we called it the Uh, that we call it the substituted phenol. The all the substituted phenol and salicylanilides. So all drugs mentioned here all are substituted phenol. Are disophenol, nitrosinate, nitroxenil, clojental. And regarding disophenol is concerned that we are going to discuss first its efficacy against the susceptible worms is concerned disophenol is active against the hookworm in dog and cats and gape worm this is very very important also active against the gape worm as we know the name of the species is syngamous trachea which block the trachea in case of a species turkey so disophenol is active against the hookworm in dog and cats and gape worm in turkey as we know this syngamous trachea gape worm is residing in the trachea and because of its uh, residing in the trachea it will inhibit the respiration properly so animal open the mouth and take respiration uh, so that form is called gape gape form so therefore the disease the worm is called gape worms so uh, about this is about the disophenol All other important an interesting point with the disophenol is that the disophenol is mainly active against the blood sucking parasite very very interesting thing not against the, the, the those that is not blood sucker so those hookworm which are the blood sucker they against that we have to use the disophenol in case of dog and cats and also against the gape worm regarding its uh, administration is concerned administered by oral and parental administration and the dose is about 10 mg per kg subcut subcutaneously next is the nitrosinate nitrosinate is also antisystodal similar to the previous drug disophenol and uh, um, antisystodal enthalamentic also control the round work in the dog so therefore the nitrosinate is used against toxocaracanis, toxoscaris, uh, leonina, ancylostoma caninum, ancinaria, stenocephalia, diphalidium caninum. And the dose for the dog is 50 mg per kg orally in empty stomach or little food. And the last one under this group is the substituted phenol is the nitroxenil and clojental. And what interesting, remarkable, silent feature with these two drugs is they are used against the fluke infestation. So this is important. And also acting against the some roundworm. Now we have to go through the last part of this antinematodal enthalmetic is the miscellaneous enthalmetic. Means miscellaneous antinematodal enthalmetic. In this, I am going to discuss only two drugs that is the phenothiazine and the toluene. So, what are the silent features the phenothiazine have that I am going to discuss? First, we have to go through the mechanism of action. Usually, what happens if you go through the mechanism of action of the drug against the worm then you will find many drugs they mainly responsible for energy system of the worms so similarly this pitothiazine phenothiazine mechanism of action is concerned a pharmacodynamic is concerned which inhibit the enzyme that participating in the carbohydrate metabolism so the mechanism of action of phenothiazine is to bind the enzymes which are participating in carbohydrate metabolism and by inhibiting the enzyme as well as sometime at higher dose of phenothiazine, phenothiazine it has been found that it inhibit the enzyme choline esterase so two main enzymatic inhibitors 
that is the inhibition of the enzyme participating in the carbohydrate metabolism. So no carbohydrate metabolism, the, the, the worm will lack the energy. So this is very, very interesting. Regarding its use is concerned, the drug is not effective against, I mean the drug phenothiazine is not effective against the cystode and trimetode, cystode and trimetode also not effective against the immature and larval worms and in horse it should be pre prescribed for the strongylus, trichostrongylus, trichonema, trichodontophorus uh, species and in remained against stomach and nodular worms and the species, uh, species are humongous esophagostomum strategia are susceptible to phenothiazine. Phenothiazine is largely active against the mature and adult worms. So this is very, very important. Another important point other than the mechanism for fiction is that the phenothiazine is going to produce two metabolites and that two metabolites are brown in color. So brown two metabolites of phenothiazine are phenothiazone and thionol. Phenothiazone and thionol and is excreted uh, this metabolite through the urine, through the milk, even through the stool and therefore it produces the colorization, brown colorization. So therefore we don't have to give this uh, uh, this phenothiazine. Other uh, side effect concerned to the phenothiazine is that in, uh, in majority of a species this is producing hemolysis but except in sheep and goat. In sheep and goat this is not producing the hemolysis. Important point uh, concerned to the phenothiazine is that they are also High, at high dosage produces the phenothiazization in some species like calf and lambs. So hemolysis is produced except sheep and goat at high concentration phenothiazine is in some species at higher dosage produces photosensitization in calf and lamb. Now we have to go through the precaution measure to use the phenothiazine. So uh, phenothiazine is contraindicated to use in weak and anemic and emaciated animal. First important point. Phenothiazine don't use in P weak, anemic and emaciated animal. Also not used in pregnant animal and lactating animal. Phenothiazine should not be given to young calves, lambs, foal, foals, and a stain and a spoil wolf, and does not advise to use in sheep. Regarding therapy with the phenothiazine is concerned, it's primarily for the ruminant, also used in horse for GI worms. Efficacy is very good against the strong, small strong guys, but at high dose it also act against the large strong guys, that is phenothiazine. Regarding the toxicity is concerned, the dog, cat and pigs, the toxicity high produce high toxicity in this species. Regarding dose is concerned for cattle, 20 to 60 mg oral, uh, 60 gram orally. For sheep, 50 to 20, M, uh, 20 gram orally. Horse, 10 to 30 gram orally. So this is all about the phenothiazine. And the last one is the toluene that also belongs to the same group that is miscellaneous enthelmintic, miscellaneous nematodal enthelmintics. So this toluene is active against, effective, effective against the escherichs, that is the toxocara species, also against the 
and xylostoma species that is the hookworm in dog and cat regarding the mechanism of action of toluene is concerned because they are the irritant in nature they are mainly affecting the neural neural cell of the susceptible parasites and therefore also producing gi mucosa irritation and the, to remove the irritation we have to give the drug in gelatin capsule form fasting is advised 12 hour while, um, while administering the drug and 4 hour after oral dose for the dose in dog and cat 0.22 ml per 22 now this is all about the anti nebulidal enthelmatic now we have to shift on the second one chapter is the anti cystodal enthelmatic or this is called anti tapeworm enthelmatic first we have to define what is the meaning of the anti cystodal or anti tapeworm enthelmatic regarding anti cystodal is concerned we have to define like that anti cystodal and anti tapeworm are the enthelmatics or the drug that are used to expel out or used to kill tapeworm in situ is called tinea fuse and tinea side respectively is called anti cystodal or anti tapeworm so the drug which only expel out the uh, uh, expel out the cystode is called tinea fuse uh, anti, uh, that is anti cystodal and the drug enthelmatic that kill the tap, tapeworm in c2 is called cystocytes or tinea site so this is the difference between killing and expelling of the worms is very very important in the definition one is going to kill another is going to only expel it out from the gastrointestinal tract regarding classification of anti cystodal drug is concerned they are classified mainly broadly in two types synthetic one and the natural one so synthetic anti cystodal enthelmatic and natural anti cystodal enthelmatic and this classification is based upon the source natural source and the synthetic source and based upon its chemical entity so under the synthetic anti cystodal enthelmatic the groups that are used as anti cystodal enthelmatics are isoquinolone the example is praziquantel and epiprantel next is the group is the salicylanilides the drug is niclosamide very very important then substituted food phenols that the examples are dichlorophene nitrosenate by thionol and next is the benzimidazole and pro benzimidazole under this the drug are albendazole fenbendazole mebendazole oxfenbendazole febent and pro drug is concerned the pro drug are febentel and netobimin regarding miscellaneous drug is concerned the drugs are bunamidine rejorontal and rudofos so this is all about the synthetic anti cystodal enthelmatic now we have to go through the natural anti cystodal enthelmatic what is interesting point with the natural anti cystodal enthelmatic is that under the organic compound natural organic anti cystodal enthelmatic they are tinea fuge only going to expel the cystode under this the example of rhizome of male fern then kamala and ericoli and under the inorganic compound the example are tin oxide tin chloride lead arsenate 
so now we have to discuss one by one in this one first we have to discuss about the synthetic antisystodal enthalmatic in this synthetic antisystodal enthalmatic first is isoquinolones under the isoquinolones the example is praziquantel and epsiprantel so these two are the very good drug particularly praziquantel is a broad spectrum antisystodal enthalmatic and now we have to discuss about the praziquantel that is the isoquinolones that i have mentioned regarding the praziquantel is that is a broad spectrum so it is broad spectrum and because of broad spectrum acting against antisystod or trimetod so anti trimetod and anti cystod drug regarding mechanism of action is concerned they are going to act by two three ways first praziquantel is going to increase the cell membrane permeability of the susceptible worm and because of increase of the cell membrane permeability of the susceptible worm calcium influx occur rapidly and because of calcium influx it raise the intracellular level of calcium and therefore it produce the contraction which leads finally to paralysis of the parasite and because of the paralysis of the parasite parasite detach from the intestinal mucosa of the host and expel out in a next way the praziquantel is also going to damage the outer layer of the susceptible worm susceptible worm we call it tegument so it destroyed the integument or tegument by vacuolation so praziquantel also produce the irreversible vacuolation or vacuole formation in the outer layer of the integument and therefore it destroy the protective layer integument or tegument and because of the two thing that is the paralysis and the protective layer damage the host proteolytic enzyme is going to digest the worm finally and therefore finally it die the, it will kill the worm so this is about the mechanism of action regarding its other activity is concerned the praziquantel is antisystodal and interesting it is ex effective against young adult and larval form of the tapeworm so this is very very important because as we know majority of the antisystodal drug are active against the uh, adult form but this praziquantel is not only for adult also for young and larval form of the tapeworm regarding a susceptible species is concerned with the praziquantel all species of tapeworm are susceptible to the praziquantel like the diphyllidium tinea mesocystoids echinococcus species and the same praziquantel is also effective against the cystosomes and trimetod in human being and animal so the praziquantel is rather not active against the round worm that is the nematodes regarding adverse effect or side effect with the praziquantel is concerned is safet used against antisystodal or tapeworm no embryotoxic no teratogenic usually not recommended for unweaned puppies and kitten praziquantel injection particularly is not advisable to use for a particular breed of dog we call it the hunds breed grey hund breed of the dog in which we are not going to inject the uh, praziquantel in injection injection regarding drug drug interaction with the praziquantel is concerned those drug that stimulate 
or induce or inhibit the metabolizing in enzyme cytochrome 3A4, they will in influence the availability of praziquantel. And therefore, we have to see the concurrent administration with the drug. So, drug like dexamethasone, phenytoin, carbamazepine that stimulate the metabolism of praziquantel. So, it will ex ex metabolized fastly and move out from the body. So, therefore, generally don't give with this. Also, other drug like phenytoin, rifampicin, azole antifungal, which also affect the metabolism of the praziquantel. So, therefore, this is important. Regarding its use is concerned that we already mentioned that use against all tapeworm in dog and cat, also against the echino, most echinococcus, uh, most against the most echinococcus. Regarding its dose in dog and cat is the 5 mg per kg orally, sheep and goat it is 10 to 15 mg per kg orally, uh, for horse 0.5 to 1.5 mg per kg orally. So this is about the praziquantel and next to praziquantel from the isoquinolones group is the ipsiprantel and similarly to this praziquantel Ipsiprantal is also showing efficacy against the echinococcus granulosus and at high dose it also affects its efficacy against the immature worm. So the Ipsiprantal is active against the GI worms, Diphyllidium caninum, Tinea and the Ipsiprantal is usually not recommended for puppies and kitten. Ipsiprantal is uh, can be given con concurrently with diethyl carbamazine and other enthalamentic. The dose is concerned for dog 5 to 5.5 mg per kg orally single dose, for cat 2.5 to 2.75 mg per kg orally single dose. So, this is all about the isoquinolones. Next to that is the salicylanilides. So, under the salicylanilide, the only one drug is coming and we call it the niclosamide. So, niclosamide is tineacidal, also widely used against the canine and feline cystode, against canine and feline cystode. Regarding mechanism of action that I will already mention, the many enthalamentic are influencing the energy system of the worms. So similarly in this niclosamide belongs to salicylinalide. Niclosamide is going to inhibit the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation. So niclosamide bind to the susceptible worm and inhibit mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation. That means it in interfere in anaerobic ATP generation so therefore it reduces the ATP generation that is going through the anaerobic way so anaerobic ATP generation get reduced in susceptible cystode and simultaneously along with this mechanism of action it also affect of the other energy system of the worm that it inhibit the glucose absorption of the tape worm. So this is very very interesting with the niclosamide. Regarding action is concerned, niclosamide is a broad spectrum enthalamentic, effective against the diphyllidium tinea equinococcus in dog and cat, for monigia in cattle, sheep and goat, for intestinal fluke paraamphiostoma in a ruminant against this all this niclosamide may be used for the therapeutic purposes. Regarding other property like side effect of the niclosamide is concerned a wide margin of safety and it is very much important that the drug should be absorbed less so if the drug should absorb less 
uh, so nucleosamide will present more amount in luminal so in luminal it act against the cystode so that is called cyst uh, tinea tineocidal activity so similar to the praziquantel nucleosamide is not embryo and teratogenic and uh, very important thing is that praziquantel is better to use against the tinea solium larvae why because praziquantel is also active against the insisted larvae of the tinea solium whereas the nucleosamide is less prefer to x against the larvae so therefore the praziquantel is prefer to use as compared to nucleosamide so this is important regarding treatment is concerned this is used for the treatment of various cystode in dogs and cats and usually a drug should be administered in the to a, about 12 hour fast fast animal and we also have to give the saline curve purgative to remove the dead segment of the worm regarding its dose is concerned in dog and cats that is 100 to 150 mg per kg orally for cattle it is 50 mg per kg orally for sheep and goat it is again 100 mg per kg orally so this is all about the nucleosamide now we have to go through the drug another group that is the substituted phenols under the substituted phenols the example are dichlorophen nitrosenate biethanols so we have to go through one by one so this drug substituted phenols are active against the tapeworm and flux so this is very very important active against the flux as well as the tapeworm but low safety of margin the drug substituted phenols are low safety of margin and still in use for tapeworm like the drug dichlorophen then nitrosenate then by thionol so this is all about the drug uh, belongs to substituted phenols now we have to go through the drug dichlorophen regarding dichlorophen is concerned the mechanism of action is concerned similar to the nucleosamide they are also affect the mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation but this is rather uncoupling the oxidative phosphorylation mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation of the susceptible parasite which resulted in energy depletion of the parasite and therefore it will influence the parasite which kill the parasite the killing effect of the drug is depend upon the contact time between the drug as well as the parasite so if the more time is there between the contact of drug and the parasite then it is going to produce more killing killing effect regarding action of dichlorophen is concerned it is narrow spectrum use moderately against tinea and diphyllidium in dog and cats a limited efficacy against the monigia expensa in sheep little efficacy against echinococcus unabsorbed drug dichlorophen is responsible for anticystodial activity that we already mentioned so dichlorophen dichlorophen is mostly for the small animal particularly of the tinea and diphyllidium to a tape worm and it has to be given in over fasted animals for the dose for dog and cats i is 200 mg per kg orally so this is about the dichlorophen now we have to go through the another one nitrosenate and biothinol nitrosenate is concerned this drug nitrosenate is also active against some of the canine cystode 
also against the nematode but not against the uh, feline parasite so activity of the nitrosinate against the roundworm hookworm tapeworm species are toxocara canis toxic toxoscaris leonine and siloestoma caninum uncinaria uncinaria stenocephalia tinea and diphyllidium caninum need adding safety of margin is concerned it is about 40 times of the therapeutic dose it is more effective when the stomach is full so nitrosinate we have to give when the stomach is full because when the stomach is full drug will be remain in the stomach for longer time interval to produce its efficacy so therefore about the nitrosinate it is irritant so therefore it should not be crushed to use by thionyl is concerned this is acting against the tapeworm in dog and cats and poultry occasionally for tapeworm and uh, remain flu infestation infection in cattle sheep goat tapeworm and tapeworm infection in horses so this is about the biothionyl so now we have to go through the next group as an anti-cystodal and thelematic is the benzimidazole and pro-benzimidazole Regarding pro benzimidazole drug is concerned, mainly the two drugs, febental and the netobibine, and the benzimidazole uh, is the albendazole, fenbendazole, memendazole, oxfendazole, which is effective against the cystode of the ruminants. And regarding its mechanism of action is concerned that we already in discussed in the previous lecture, that is, uh, that is the mechanism of action. They act mainly the bind to the uh, beta tubulin and inhibit the microtubule polymerization. Uh, the regarding mechanism of action, we already discussed, but even though again we have mentioned here. Regarding other property of benzimidazole is concerned, the drug is not effective against diphyladium tapeworm. The use drug like albendazole, use, uh, use of the drug like albendazole. Fenbendazole are showing effective against the mature tinea and equinococcus in dog and cats, monogia in ruminants, and also it kill intermediate cyst of tinea in infected sheep and cattle. So this is all about the benzimidol. Now we have to go through the miscellaneous drug under the last under the heading of the anti-cystodal enthelmantic. In this, the drug are Bunamidine. salt is available in form of hydrochloride and hydroxy naphthoate. Right, regarding bunamidine, hydrochloride is concerned. Hydrochloride salt is used for the dog and cat, whereas the bunamidine uh, salt uh, hydroxy naphthoate is used in case of sheep and goats. So this is very, very important. And this is tinea side that is going to kill the cystode. So both the salt are tinea side. Regarding mechanism of action is concerned, the similar to the above other uh, other drug is concerned this is also going to influence the energy system of the worm so bunamidine mechanism of action is concerned it will decrease the glucose uptake of the susceptible worm so no if there is a decrease glucose uptake by the worm then energy system deficit is occur so less atp is there and therefore it is going to kill the worms so the effective against bunamidine hydrochloride is effective for dog and cat so this is used for many tapeworm in dog including gynococcus and also against the diphyllidium but the effectivity is the inconsistent in nature bunamidine hydroxine naphthoate is active high high act, high, high activity against the monogia infection in sheep in sheep and goats and bunamidine should be administered in the empty stomach for better efficacy 
because this is going to give more uh, contact time with the drug and uh, vinamidine is irritant in nature so its drug is coming in coated preparation and not be used as a crushed form of the drug vinamidine less in use because of its uh, adverse effect on the heart particularly vinamidine is going to uh, produce the adverse effect on heart like ventricular fibrillation and myocardial sensitization to get to catecholamines under this the, uh, the example of the dose for dog and cats is 25 to 50 mg per kg orally as a single dose in empty stomach and the last one is the Rosa Resorental. Resorental is active against the human flux, para stoma and monigia tapeworm in cattle and sheep. In addition to that, that are also acting against the Thaise Nigia GRD and Evitelina species. Regarding mechanism of action is concerned, they are again influencing the energy system of the worm uh, in glucose metabolism in the susceptible worms. So this is the mechanism of action of the regorental. Well tolerated in the sheep and safe in the pregnant animals. So, uh, and this regorental is huge two to three days before lambing. And the dose for the sheep is 65 mg per kg orally. Now we have to go through the natural antisystodal enthalmentic. In this natural antisystodal enthalmentic, we are not to use this drug because of its activity like tinea fuse that is only helps to expel it out the worm and the we have the better drug then why we have to use the natural one so in absence of the uh, synthetic one we may try to use the natural one also so the drug under this the, that are mainly used are Kamala or Ericoline, which uh, which which paralyze the worms, which paralyze the worm. So now we have to go through the one by one. So dr uh, the drug under the compound under this is the Kamala. Kamala is also known as Rotelera, Rotelera. Kamala and Rotlera isolated from obtained from the plant Melotus Philippines and which is fruit part. So from, from the fruit part of the uh, Melotus Philippines, the agent Kamala or Rotlera get, get isolated and this plant is found in India, Pakistan and, and the China. And the active constituent is also matching. So active constituent of the rota, uh, rotlera is rotlerine. So rotlerine and isorotlerine is the uh, active constituent of the Kamala. And that is the tinea fuse that is only expel out the cystode and used in the dog and cats and poultry. The mechanism of action is concerned not well explored, but it paralyzed that tapeworm by its stimulation so it paralyzes the tapeworm and as well as it also increases the peristaltic movement of the host gut and before because of the increasing peristaltic movement of the host that uh, the worm paralyzed worm is going to be re removed out from the gi tract if not removed then we have to go for the purgative for the dose in the dog is 8 gram orally. For the dose in cat is 0 0.6 to 1 gram orally. So this is about the Kamala. Next is the Ericoline. Ericoline is obtained from the plant. The name of the plant is Erika Ketichu. And from its dried right. Uh, the ripe seed of Arika Ketechu, we have isolated the Ericoline, obtained Ericoline. The common is, name is the betel nut uh, or Arika nut. Thus, as such, Ericoline is unstable without its salt. 
so its salt is hydrobromide and acetarsal which make the ericoline stable and occasionally this ericoline use as a antihistodal compound this ericoline hydrobromide is effective against several tapeworms in the dog including echinococcus because mechanism of action of ericoline is concerned this is cholinomyomatic in action so because of cholinomyomatic action it is producing the transient paralysis of the worm and as well as the because of its cholinomyomatic action it also increases peristaltic movement of the host so host peristaltic movement will helps to expel out the paralyzed worm so if the worm will not be expel out within the 2 hour of the ericolon use then we have to give the saline purgative or saline enema to the host so that it has to be expel out from the gastrointestinal tract the drug is usually ericoline is coming in in tericotate preparation because it will minimize the cholinomyomatic effect on host ericoline hydrobromide is not recommended for the cat so in cat ericoline hydrobromide is not recommended it also increase the bronchi because it increase the bronchial secretion and bronchoconstriction in young puppy and kitten